it is recording and I mean obviously we're going to do a video this time so we will actually I mean you know anyone that is watching the video will already see who we have but for those who aren't and you're listening to the podcast I always get really excited when we have a guest but I feel like my excitement just keeps going up every single time and I'm so excited to have him here with me he is literally like on any good show that you've ever seen so um and the more you look at his imdb the crazier it gets so you're like okay seinfeld friends charmed angel uh roseanne he was also like a, a main heavy heavy lead for uh, once upon a time that's how i met him and then also of course pirates of the caribbean and many 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 others well S star trek well anyway we'll get to that um so on many star treks so yeah Welcome, Mr. Lee Arenberg. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I get excited. That was actually really you. cool. You went, you went deep on that list. I appreciate it. I fully yeah, went. Cool. I deep I dove. <laughs> yeah, I deep dove. It was, <laughs> it was intense. Yeah. Thing is, yeah. is you can just keep scrolling and you're like, holy shit. Look at that. Oh, my God. And you just keep going. So it's, it's great. It's great. How does it feel to have it's been, a, like, working solidly like that I really love being an actor and my favorite part about it is the is the actual working you know the part I hate is trying to get the job and dealing with all the internal str struggle of like am I good enough that we all go through so when you get those rewards along the way I make sure to enjoy it yeah. You know, I check in with my gratitude on a daily basis. I practice gratitude because acting is a, is an actual, if you, if you, once you get your SAG card, it's like a license for resentment, you know, mm -hmm. and I tell this to every young actor, it's like, listen, that SAG card is your license to be resentful of mm -hmm. all the people that are going to reject you and it's coming. So yeah. let's be grateful for the positive. I mean, it's like, it's hard to see my friends that I did theater with that are bigger movie stars than me or guys I went to school with. That shit can eat you if you're not really just grateful for your little piece of the pie. Yeah. So I, I, I practice that. I fail quite almost every day, but that's why it's a practice. That's why you practice meditation. You practice yoga. You're never supposed to be perfect. It's just like, let's, yeah. So it's, I, I've been really lucky I, you know, my theater background really helped me. Uh, yeah. I'm a founding member of this group called the Actors Gang, which is probably one of the key parts of my, you know, CV, if you will. Uh, came out of UCLA, my classmates in college, including Tim Robbins, um, uh, Lawrence Olivier's son, Richard, uh, right. Richard Olivier, uh, so many, Johnny Cusack, a whole litany of, of, of well-known Jack Black, Kyle Gass, the Tenacious D band. Um, these yeah. are my homies. So watching other people's success, if I want to get obsessed with their like thing, I, that would be a big pitfall. So I'm happy oh, yeah. with my little shot on, you know what I mean? You got to be happy with who you are. Yeah. And it's taken me 50 years to, to, to go for that, but it's been working. And so to, in a short, long answer to your question, it's fucking cool to have a long resume as an actor, for sure. <laughs> it's fucking cool. Nice. It's fucking cool. <laughs> anyway, how's this, how's, this, um, how's this past week been for you? How have you, have you been? What have you been up to? You know, the past week, honestly, I got my second shot of the vaccine yesterday, Pfizer vaccine, Pfizer family. Nice. Thank you. Nice. Yeah, it feels, it feels like freedom. Um, yeah. I've been real cautious this whole time out of literally like that shit scares me, you know, um, I'm 58. Like I was saying, that's like, I'm a little chunky, you know what I mean? I see people that look like me died a fucking lot of yeah. all over the mm -hmm. world, you know, dads, 50 year old guys, you know? And so I had a healthy respect for the virus thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so like I stayed, I stayed, my, I had a deal, I lost my mom last year. That was a real tough one. Uh, going to hospitals, then eventually going through a long hospice with her. And uh, so I really wanted to stay, like that was initially when the virus hit. I was like, oh my God, my mom's 92, blah, blah, blah. I want to be able to be it. So it was a, there was a lot of complications. And I, I think 
we've all been through trauma uh, as a human race or on this planet. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it feels great. Um, I feel like life is returning a bit to normal, which is exciting. Um, yeah. You know, I'm a father of a teenage son who plays sports. So the baseball's happening for us. That's really good for him emotionally, returning him to school. These are the things that matter to me. I could give a shit about my acting career. Uh, I put, <laughs> I'm trying to learn to put everything else first. Yeah, yeah. And uh, as actors, I tend to be, I mean, I feel like I'm a very selfish person to be in this profession. It needs that. Mm -hmm. And so to learn the lessons of gratitude, putting others first, I'm able to enjoy. I'm not working. My phone's not ringing. I should be like, oh my God, I'm, you know, what's wrong Mm -hmm. with me? But instead (laughs) I'm like, cool. And I, I mean, for me, that's a big deal because I'll be like, you know, when I'm not working and I see other people working, I, it gets me uptight. Yeah. You know? I think All that's my, very normal. Is it? Yeah. I just, I'm, yeah. I admit I get, I get like a bit of the jealousy. I'm like, what's, and then I get into my, I'm not good enough. And I might let my, there's a thing a buddy of mine says, it's called the negative insurgency. Oh, and yeah. it's the negative thoughts that we tell ourselves that we believe that no one else sees about us. Yeah. Absolutely. And so that holds a lot of us back from being, you know, success is scary. I got news for you. That's, being yeah, successful I, is way scary. <laughs> like, that's true. You know, yeah, and so, I think, I think a lot of people are probably more, more fearful of success than, than they are of failure, which I think failure is kind of a, an easier pill to swallow, which is yeah. bizarre. Check this out. <laughs> If I, if you give someone a compliment, like, my God, Jen, you look fantastic. I love the little raccoon rings of your sunburn, whatever it is. You know? <laughs> but immediately, immediately, the, the, the inclination is to push or deflect. Try it. Give someone a compliment. They'll be like, no, within five seconds. That's Jen. Try it. <laughs> that right? is yeah it, 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 the truth is the truth is that if i were to say hey lee someone goes to me you're a piece of shit i'm going to believe that right away because of all the negative thoughts that i tell myself but if mm-hmm. someone says to me dude you were so great in that show 20 years ago that i finally saw where you walked in and walked out you know you didn't kick the furniture <laughs> I've learned to go to sit with that. You need to sit with it for 13 seconds of silence. Mm-hmm. It takes 13 for a positive energy. And then, and then the way you return it is, thank you. That made me feel great. Thank you for saying that. As opposed to going, Snedgy, you look great too. You said, you look great. Oh, you look great too. It's kind of deflecting the compliment. I don't want it. It's like a hot potato. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So learning I like- to, mm-hmm. I think life and acting for sure, when we want to talk about acting, especially film acting, mm-hmm. how do you penetrate the screen? How do you live on camera? We're not performing. In fact, we're anti-performing. Mm-hmm. Performing on screen is real noticeable. Yes. And the style now is just so underplaying everything. But really what it is, is it's going in. It's living, yeah. occupying the character. And so 100%. we have to learn to do that in real life before we can do that as actors and accepting the good stuff and sitting with it and being learning how to be uncomfortable is life is my life lesson. Number one mm-hmm. and getting complimented is really uncomfortable. It is so uncomfortable. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it is so uncomfortable. I've got better. I definitely have got better. Um, I kind of just go, thank you. That's a good one. I don't say anything else. I just go, thank you. And then just thank stop. You. Because yeah. before I'd be like, oh, if you think so. That's what I would usually be like, oh, if you think so. As in, that's your opinion. <laughs> you know? Right. Deflective. But, it's not yeah. generous. It's discounting the other person. That's what I, that's where I, I, that was the biggest lesson for me was not the deflection and the false modesty. Because I know I'm fucking great. You know, I mean, that's, that's the other part. The person that tells himself they're terrible also goes, you're fucking amazing. 
Yeah. You wouldn't be in this business if you didn't have some fucking courage and believe yeah. in yourself, right? That's mm -hmm. how you get agents to believe in you. That's how you get producers to believe in you. That's how you get, you know, a reload of like, okay, I'm a, I'm a guest star on a show. Now I'm a series, a recur. They mm -hmm. like your energy, <clears throat> yeah, right? 100%. So that's a big part of it is learning to sit with nice things. And, uh, you know, it's easy for us to accept that we made a mistake. But it's hard to accept that, man, thanks. That was really cool. Thanks. I make my kid a ramen. He goes, thanks, Papa. Thanks for the, you know, I love you. I made him, I just made him a soup. But it's the effort, you know? Of course. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I know. Was that and I do make great ramen, by the way. I make great ramen. Oh, yeah. Oh, I obviously. love ramen. That just made my mouth water. <laughs> I, I follow my Instagram. I have like, I'm a, I'm a, a, like a follow noodles on my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Wow, I need to check out your Instagram actually, just to see all of the different types of noodles. I guess that you've got going on. Yeah, I don't necessarily post my own noodles. I'm not like someone that. It's oh. funny, like social media. Well, more who I follow. So I guess you could follow my followers. But the the thing I'm noticing about Instagram is you can't compete with like I'm never going to be a bikini model who uh, does TikToks and like. You know what I mean? People's sexuality yeah. and the OnlyFans and the rise of all these things that have come in this last year. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not, that's not me. And so in a way it's been, it's helped me with my social media addiction because I can't compete. So I'm happy again, just being who I am. Totally. Right. We've actually and, talked and about it that, before. Oh, sorry. No, no. I mean, it's definitely um, an issue. Yeah, of course it is. I mean, like we've said actually before in a previous episode about the fact of the, the mindset now of people that are want to get into acting, that they think like, oh, I'll just become an actor. Oh, I'll just do this. Just because of that Instagram and uh, like vlogging and all that kind of stuff that people think, oh, it's just this side hustle thing that I can do rather than it being like something that you actually really want to do. It's like, oh, I'll just I'll just do a bit of acting. And it's I'll like very casual. It yeah, yeah, it's mm -hmm. really, and I think Instagram's, Kind, very much to blame for this kind of weird because if yeah. you just if you wear basically nothing you're going to get loads of followers um god that sounds really negative but it's true like you know so I, 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 know. I appreciate i appreciate it too i mean there's nothing wrong with like you know uh appreciating it but yeah. it uh it's the vapidness like mm. It's the same pose. It's, that's what gets me. It's like yeah. it's always the same angle. Yeah. Yeah, it's the good and angle. Like how many, how many, and we get it. We get it. You know, what's your yeah. angle? And it, it's just like, it's okay, though. It's a, it's become a way for people to make a, a, a you know, some money. Um, yep. They monetize it. They've certainly become famous. I mean, if you want to go into my resentment list, I could go like, well, these guys are getting huge offers and studio deals. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm giving my time. Yeah. But I mean, as an agent, you need to sign a couple. Yeah. I mean, it's no, this is a business, right? Like, we're, this is a business. And so, on a business standpoint, it makes sense. Cool. You know, the social media to have. To have, like, if it's between me and somebody else and we have equal resumes and I have 100,000 followers and he's not, uh, doesn't have any presence, that could be, an, you know, I might be able to get some butts in the seats or some eyes on, you know, clicks on uh, on Netflix. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Super it. relevant. Yeah. I've got to ask as well, Lee, because I'm a massive Star Trek fan, like massive. I'm like a mm. huge Trekkie. So the really? fact that you were on, yeah, the fact that you're on voyager next generation and i think also deep space nine but i never watched I'm one of the deep few characters i was on all of them i was on enterprise as well oh. so i did deep space deep space i did a one deep space i did three i think next gens including playing the arch nemesis of the card as a ferengi nice. and then on uh voyager i played this guy uh this character that was called a malon yep with some, some unique uh, alien species and then on Enterprise, I was the Tellarite ambassador that made peace with the Andorians. Oh, right. <laughs> you know, uh, that's a, if you can see me, that is one of the worst costumes of uh, makeup jobs ever. <laughs> but, 
That was a wow. But Star Trek, great people. Yes. Great people. I was not a Trekkie. Uh, my brother, father, more science fiction kind of guys. I wasn't as much until I became in, in was welcomed into the family. Definitely. And some of those actors are some of the nicest, greatest dudes in this business that were that lucked out to be. I mean, from Armin Shimmerman, LeVar Burton, Pat Stewart, Johnny Frake. I mean, you go through the whole list. Uh, Garrett Wang, go through the, the other cast as well. Uh, Scott Bakula. I could go through every single cast and tell mm-hmm. you that those are good people that deserve to break. And I was really happy for their run as and they became stars. Yeah, so, absolutely. It's a cool world. Very so cool. Yeah, that was <laughs> very theatrical. You have to project your character through that latex, you know. Yes. Mm. And there was a lot. There's a lot of layers. Like I was looking at the pictures of you as uh, various uh, various aliens, and it's, that's that's a lot. There's a lot of that's a lot of layers. I wish you wouldn't this really know it was you under there. there. It's three and a half hours. I mean, the and they'll take longer. The thing about fucking uh, effects makeup is they chase you all day. <laughs> so you put the nose on, even grumpy nose and the grumpy ears. They'll they'll be chasing mm-hmm. you all day with glue and making sure it's their job. So you, it's again, it's a team sport. Yeah, this is something that we don't, you know, that we have to learn, and you learn this um, as an actor. But there are a thousand people making you look good, bro. Yeah. So Too respect right. your makeup artist. Respect your wardrobe. Respect your caterer. You know, listen to your DP. You can yeah. learn a lot when you're you don't think you're that fucking great. It's a mm-hmm. team sport, you know. I always think about Pirates of the Caribbean. You know, um, the stunt guys, the marine guys, all the guys that you know that went did all the heavy lifting, carrying plywood in the jungle so we could do your you know dolly shots <laughs> or whatever it is. It's just like oh my god, dude. Yeah. So again, that's intense. But our job. When they fucking roll action, that's what you get paid for. I always say, listen, you, they, you should teach this to your clients, Neji. They go that they the paying what they, what you're negotiating for is them waiting around, them leaving right. their home, them leaving their family. The acting you always do for free. Mm-hmm. No one could pay me enough to do acting. What you pay me for is to be where you want me to be when you want me to be, and hop to like a good little soldier. Right. Good point. To come out of my trailer, <laughs> you know. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I forget who I heard that from, but it's definitely a, one of those sayings from like that was passed on by other actors. That and mm-hmm. the easiest way to get an actor to complain is to give them a job. So just don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. True. <laughs> like grind the so fuck true. out with your with your with your reps. Make sure mm-hmm. the deal is the deal. And then, listen, I'm supposed to be in a two-hole. And if I'm not, I'll fix it. Mm, yeah. But don't be in a three-hole and then go, why am I not in a two-hole? You had your shot at that. <laughs> yeah. So Definitely. know what's important to you. Know what's important to you as a, as a performer so that when you have the opportunity to get on set, you can do your job. And always 100%. be prepared. I'm in Definitely. class. I've been in class every week of this pandemic on mm-hmm. Zoom. Nice. It's it's helped me. I've been doing Zoom theater. I've been doing all this stuff. I'm sharp. I'm ready. Mm-hmm. When that when they call my bluff, like, hey, we got a short bald fucking crazy guy. Are you available? Short bald crazy. <laughs> check check check. Here I am. <laughs> I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> I'm ready for That's my awesome. close up, Mister Demille. <laughs> I, know. I know. It's um. I think even when I see when I um because obviously it's quite random the fact that we actually know each other like that I I know you because obviously I mean you know what some British redhead knows you you of all people I'm like no one (laughs) but like (laughs) yeah so it's not it's not that surprising to me maybe it's surprising that like maybe but I mean I like (laughs) you're fucking pretty cute as a nurse I will say that it didn't hurt. (laughs) That's when we met, right? You were the nurse. Yeah, of course. Behind a, the reception desk. Together. Yeah. Yeah. And we were yeah. hanging out there. So it's like, as actors, we're going to, like, I'm going to be talking to the background. And that's one thing I find really odd in uh, in our business, too, is the relationship to the background, to the to the actor. You know, the actor sort of has to, especially Vancouver, you got to, can't talk to that person unless they talk to you first. 
know. So and, weird. I mean, it creates a lot of the bullshit in our industry of the hierarchy. Mm. And whenever mm. I hear the actors go, don't look at me, I'm like, what? Ah. <laughs> what does that even mean? Yeah. Like, we need to get like, you into the shrink immediately, bro. Yes, for a exactly. Say, <laughs> <It's like, laughs> what, you mean one human can't look at another human being? What? That's and good. not like Christian Bale getting mad at the camera guy that got in his eye line. And yeah. that's bullshit. I'm telling you, like, I'm on Christian Bale's side on that. Yeah. Because when I'm trying to do it, if I'm trying to do a, a look deep and you put something in my eye line, my eye just ne- can't not but do of that. Of course. Yeah. So 100%. the fact that he might have, and even the DP goes later in life, you know, oh my God, he was right. And so mm. they made a big thing out of him being difficult. But I'm like, dude, let's, that's basic stuff that should have been the AD's responsibility to keep his eye line clear. Yeah, shouldn't absolutely. Have to, he, he shouldn't have to tell professionals on a $100 million movie to keep his freaking eye line clear. I'm sorry. Yeah. But no. that's his, and his job. And it's going to make him look bad. It's going to be an unusable shot. So let's, this kid's been in the business at that time probably 20 years, right? Because he was a kid mm. star. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I, I'm i on his side on that one. But when I hear about some others, like, don't ever look at me. And there's like, plenty uh, of them. There's plenty yeah, of them. Yeah. I don't need to play games. That, just, yeah. that to me is weird. So, but with you as another artist, um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna meet you. If you're cool. I met so many, of, and the background on once was the same people a lot of the time. It so was. my God, it was respectful for me not to know these people. You yeah. know, if I'm working with you for seven years and I'm not gonna have a a, a chat in Granny's Diner yeah. or the hospital, like shame yeah. on me. I don't roll like that, my friends. No, I don't. Roll no, like you don't. I'm not that. That's not who I am as an actor anyway. Yeah, the parts I play, I'm like one of the crowd. You know, <laughs> yeah. I never no, play the was... king. I don't play the king. I don't play the king. I'm not the president. <laughs> but maybe you, maybe you might be. Maybe you will. Maybe be, you might yeah. be. One day you'll I mean, be in, president. In, in an alternate reality, yeah. I mean, I never say never. I certainly could do. I look great in a suit for sure. Too maybe right. Not. But <laughs> that doesn't happen often. But you didn't find that there's a deep dive. You didn't mention my Californication. Or I know, see, my, this is the thing. Or one of my favorite shows. What? Or one of my favorite shows of all time, a show called Action. Action? You two you ever heard of Action? No. no. It was a Fox show in uh, 2020, uh, 2000, and it was about Hollywood, and I played basically the, the, the studio head who oh, was... Cool. Who was he was, uh, he was basically the, they called it, he literally was the biggest dick in Hollywood and he would nice. prove it. I was always naked. I did the first full male frontal nudity on network TV. Oh, it's wow. crazy. Wow. This show was out there. It should have been on cable. It was that ahead of its time. Um, but because the year before CBS passed on Sopranos oh. and let it get on. So this was when TV was changing. Now TV is so much edgier. Right. Yeah. yeah. Back then, there was still this. Back then, that was the dawn of good TV, in my mind. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, TV movies fucking suck for the most part, and TV is where you want to be. If you're a writer, or if you want, or an actor, it's better. It's a better. It's more stable. Mm -hmm. Um, Although they are like making everyone occur, and they have two leads. I mean, I don't care. All the games they want to play to save a couple pennies. It doesn't matter. The bottom line is when you hit, it goes big. Yeah, right. And that's why our business has always been a good investment because especially that's what makes movies good investment. Throughout your career, like, did you have several different agents or did you kind of stick with one person or how did that go? I've never really had great. I mean, I had one agent for pretty much the first 20 years. I haven't had an agent oh, wow. since Pirates. Right. Right. No one wants oh. me. I mean, I'm not really. This is an interesting question because. So how does that work? <laughs> I have managers, managers, and good lawyers. Okay. I'm great man. Yeah. I've always had good managers, and okay. they've disciplined. But but the agency, for whatever reason, yeah, the, they they just never. The big ones never really wanted me as a character. I don't make. I mean, I'm a top whatever five percent, three percent, but they want the top one percent, or they want the undiscovered under thirty really pretties. 
or mm-hmm. and so I just never really qualified to get myself to those WME Abrams. They just never, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not also I'm I'm not one to really go out there and try and hustle for that shit too much because that kind of rejection really makes me it, it, I get desperate. Right. I get desperate about it. I, I'm happy. My managers do all the work. I had a gr- I, unfortunately I had a tough break. My, I lost two managers passed away on me, both young oh, men God. that I loved what? dearly. My buddy Rick Axe, who was my agent for many years, um, cancer got him. And wow. then Joe Rice, who was from Abrams, who was then my guy and another great, great fucking love Joe. He died of a heart attack moving some rocks in the hot sun, you know? Oh my, uh, my just God. Like I know. Wow. And then I was like, I went to my next manager and I was like, well, which one are you next? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> had to get that joke out of the way first, you know, before they could bring it up. Yeah, at least there was right. three or four of them, you know. So, but no, that was some personal tragedy in that you know uh, had developed these relationships and really, you know, and then you know, it's just it it is about the the, the preciousness of life. So, I'm always up for good agents. Um, I believe in that. Um, you do need a rep, but I always tell everyone, you know, I'm the 90% or at least the 85%. They're only the 10 or the 15. So I've never really, I'm not someone that's ever going to call my manager and go, Hey, what's going on? You yeah. Know, I just live my life and try and, and I try and do stuff that generates action. I'd say a good percentage of my stuff, you know, has been somebody that I know that I connect with that I refer to my peeps. Yeah. Yeah. So... It's a bit of a bone of contention because I, I feel like, you know, I'd probably be further along uh, potentially with different, you know, with different reps through my career. But right. I don't know if that's really true or not. I mean, the ultimate one would be to be with someone who packages, you know, and that would have been the, probably the one thing that I missed out on uh, because I am a color that fits with so many pretty people. You know, you can put me in as the good friend or whatever. I fit a lot. You know, mm, and I yeah. look good opposite tall dudes because I'm short, so it gives some con makes them look taller. So yeah. I Fair wish I, that would have been a good one to be packaged. But I mean, listen. Again, I'm grateful for all that I have. I live on a beach thanks to to, to this business. I mm. you know have I have I have vehicles. I have food in my refrigerator. My power's on right now. You mm-hmm. know. Yeah. You know, and I have, you know, I have, a, a, you know, I've been fairly smart knowing that, like, I'll get a chunk and I got to make it last. Mm-hmm. Right. Too right. So to answer the question, though, if you're interested, I could use a great Vancouver agent. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, yeah, because people were doing that where they get a, they get a, they'll get an Atlanta agent. Right. Yeah. They'll have one here. I mean, that was that was relatively new when they started doing that to be able to follow the work. Mm-hmm. My guys right now are called Vanguard. I, they're fantastic. There's a whole team. They're they're efficient. They've got me out. I mean, the bottom line is when you're a character actor and there's a big diversity push in the casting, and I'm good with that. But mm-hmm. occasionally it falls down to my category. Where now, you know, they, they open it up and there's just a shitload of great actors out there. And when you're looking for actors in their 50s or late 40s or whatever the range that I can pull off. I'm in 58, I'll be 59. Obviously, I skew younger, you know, when mm-hmm. I, in terms of uh, what my energy I give off. So I'm competing with some real heavy hitters, yeah. you know, when I go for roles. And I understand that. And I have to accept that, you know. Um mm-hmm. I'm, I, I personally know that I'm going to hit it hard the next crack. I, when I get a crack, I'll hit it hard. And that, that's all. That's my responsibility. The rest I can't control. Mm-hmm. Two things we control in our lives are our attitude and our effort. That's it. And smiles yep. are free. Yes. Everything else, it's learning to surrender the outcome of your audition. Go do your best. The casting director just wants to see... Let's do some work together. Mm-hmm. Can I make that casting director by looking in their eye 
tingle, feel uncomfortable, feel good about themselves. What's my character trying to do to your character? Yeah. If you can, if you can create a moment, mm. a moment, that's what you're trying to do. We create moments as actors. That gives the editor something to work with. Definitely. Right? That's yeah. why when I do a take, I always try and go big on my first take. Not big like big, but I go for it on the first take. There's no warming into it. Maybe emotionally I'm saving it for my close-up, mm -hmm. the tears or whatever that would be. But mm -hmm. I'm not, and I'm not going to waste it with a wide shot. I mean, you have to know where you are in terms of telling the story of shooting a scene. But mm -hmm. yeah. in terms of what we're bringing to the table, you have to bring it every time. Depending Absolutely. on the director, you might go, that's it. I got it. Yeah. You can't go like, oh, I need one more. There's no fucking one more. This, is an, <laughs> this time is money in this business. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so as a young performer or even as a seasoned character guy, you know, I'm not the star of the show necessarily. Once in a while, the ball will be in my court. But mostly I'm there to support the others, be an obstacle in a scene or uh, be, you know, some sort of support for another player as a supporting actor, right? So know your function, know your lines, be the ultimate pro and show up like excited to be there and thankful and grateful. Good yeah. things happen when you're grateful. Yeah. hundred percent. I feel like the supporting characters are always the most lovable anyway. They always win over the crowd. <laughs> yeah, that's our job. They're the ones you watch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you may fall in love with your lead characters. That's going to keep you coming back week in and week out. We need you mm -hmm. to fall in love with our Snow Whites and our Evil Queens. That's 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 how we sell soap. Yeah. Right. It's a business, and I never. This is the thing. As an actor, it's foolish to say, in my opinion, that you're do making art. We are craftsmen. Mm -hmm. It's way more like building a house than it is like. Mm -hmm. Be creating art. Art is what the audience says it is. That was fucking amazing. I'm going to go see it again. That was cool. I'm going to buy the action figures. I want a Captain Jack outfit. Mm -hmm. That's art. That's elevation. The artist mm -hmm. goes, the actor goes, oh man, I'm a craftsman. It's a guild. Screen actors guild. We're members of a guild. And if you mm -hmm. look back in history, what does that mean? Well, a guild was a collection of craftsmen of candle makers, of woodworkers. We're way more tied into that in what we do, building a character. It's in the, it's in the words, yeah. right? So having that approach to the work helps. I'm here to do the floors. <laughs> I'm not here to win an Oscar. I'm here to win an Emmy. I'm here to, I'm polishing floors today. I'm cleaning windows. I'm a construction guy. My brother-in-law is a contractor. I do construction. I flip houses in my own houses. And I'm oh, on, nice. I, now I'm well enough to paint houses or run paint crews or do floor crews or, you know, I can do demo. I'm good at landscape. Um, but that nuts and bolts, the getting dirty, is very much, I relate very much to how I act. Mm -hmm. Right? It's Yeah. It's Immersing yourself, not staying clean, not staying pretty. Let the emotion go where the emotion goes. 100%. Your job is you're a craftsman. When they 100%. say action, you need to be listening. You need to be vulnerable and we need to be non-reactive, non-reactive. They used to say acting is reacting. That's bullshit. Acting is actually not, is actually living. Can you mm -hmm. live as that character for five minutes mm -hmm. in a take or five seconds? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. That's cool. I, I like the it's way you like shit. thinking. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> it's heavy shit. It's, no, it's heavy it shit. It's great. Yeah, but it's... If you yeah. want to love, if you want to be loved, love others. If you want to learn, teach something. Mm -hmm. I do this with my son all the time. I said, listen... uh, with his homework, I'll make him teach me it. And then I know he knows it. Oh, yeah. nice. That's how you do it. Noted. <laughs> it's a good tip. And always be curious. 
Mm -hmm. You forgot what it's like to be a teenager. He lives it. Mm, Definitely. I find myself trying to control his shit and it is going to be a train wreck. When I come in (laughs) with curiosity and non-judgment, he opens up and shares. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same with, same with, you know, in, in a significant relationship to be curious and supportive. It's really hard in a marriage. It's why so many fucking fail. Because you have to root for the other person. And sometimes you have to like, your technique's not my technique, but I'll support you. And, you know, Mm -hmm. so I love my wife, but she's fucking, she's a, she fucking goes for it. I get scared. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I think my husband, Lee also has uh my husband's name's Lee, so I, I feel like I Lee. Know, I, know he, he's also, I knew that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's uh, he's he's a little bit afraid of me as well. He'll listen to this podcast and be like, "What?" But he is. So you know, it's. But, I, but I'm I'm, I'm you, Team Lee. Like I'm a team Lee. He landed you though, Jen. He's a cool dude. He made you smile. <laughs> you, I saw those wedding pictures. True. You were happy. He's yeah, a good ass. He's, he's pretty all right. He's yeah. pretty all right. Good for you. He's exactly. pretty all right. <laughs> Yeah, he's all right. He's we're great. All, he's we're good. all okay. We're just okay at best. We're just okay. Yeah, we're all good. Um, obviously, I'm kind of aware of the time. So what I'm going to do is we've got like some like random questions that um, we've got. Yeah. So I've got I've got two, and Najina's got one. So I'll start, and like just because it's just kind of just some ra- it's just random like, but just you do know, it. just do it. You know, okay, cool. Like I'm I'm, I'm all in. No, this is actually what I know. It's really fun. This is a great podcast. <laughs> um, I just because honestly because it's easy and and you guys did yeah. your homework and you're asking interesting things so well now yeah I'm sure well, so I, I I love the fact that you're you're on it I love the fact that you even agreed to do it so it's very awesome oh so my god you. are you kidding it's flattered <laughs> thanks I, I really was I, I I've always I mean I I think you know what I mean I I think it's really rad that you're doing it. I like and podcast is a way to communicate and that's so important. It is. Thank it you. Is. I love it. You're welcome. Um so my first question is um have you ever been mistaken uh for another famous person? Do people like has ever has anyone ever like looked to you and gone, "Oh, aren't you and kind of mistaken you for someone well, I got else?" I have two big stories for that. I I don't know that I really do, but people tell me, especially when I was younger, that I look like John Malkovich. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. Okay, so, especially oh, yeah, when he okay. was doing Killing Fields. I had the Jew fro. I could show you a couple <laughs> pictures where I looked just like him from my youth. You nice. can find him on Facebook. But he was doing a production. I, my first professional job was at a theater called the Mark Taper Forum here in Los Angeles. So it would have been 1986 or 1886. And he mm-hmm. was starring in a show that was on the main stage right before us. So I had an encounter once going into our rehearsal as he was coming out of a rehearsal. And he goes like, he's a lot taller than me. He goes, hey, you look like me. And so he told me once, that's a good one, my mouth could be. And then, <laughs> you ever heard of a wrestler called Randy Macho Man Savage? <laughs> no. no, but I'm going to look him up. I used, to, I used to be obsessed wrestler. with wrestling. Oh, wow. I used to be obsessed, so I'm sure I will. Macho Man is real, 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 real famous wrestler, right? And I was doing a convention in Florida, and I kept hearing, Macho Man's here, Macho Man's here. I was like, what? (laughs) And it turned out it was me. (laughs) But I had my full (laughs) beard. So Malkovich and Randy Macho Man Savage are my two. I... Jen, wow, I we love have that. To segue to the second question, but I think yeah. it'll be the last one. So yeah, yeah. I'll do it. Um, yeah, yeah, you go for it. Since the wrestler thing came up, that was the mm-hmm. next question. If you were a professional wrestler, what would your entrance theme song be? Probably. Ooh, it's a good one. I mean, I think with if I was a wrestler, I'd probably be something like Bad to the Bone. Nice. I, mean, I, think I, I would definitely not be. I would be. A, I would want to be a villain as a wrestler. Yeah, that's about. more fun. So. <laughs> and then, of course, I'd become heroic by doing something, sacrifice whatever the stories. The theatricality of professional wrestling is incredible. Yeah, um, great. <laughs> I'm, not huge, I'm not a huge like 
devotee as much as others, but I do appreciate, I mean, the physical commitment and, uh, yeah. you know, they are theatrical. That's why I love sports as well. Um, professionals, athletes, it's that mm. we're all tied into the ancient days. You know, theater was sacred. Theater was sacred in the ancient times in Greece, right? And even to a certain extent in Rome. And then it was competing also with the sports. When you go to theater, when you go to a sporting event and they dim the house lights and bring up the lights on the court or on the hockey, on the on the mm. rink, it's magical. It's theatrical, mm. right? Yeah. So we, in, and especially in the ancient days, actors were the storytellers of these ancient tales of our society. The rise of the church, they became the competitors. And that's when yeah. actors were vilified in society. No actors or dogs allowed for about 2,000 years. Our job in society is after the garbage man goes around and cleans up the mess and needs mm. to come home and be entertained and diverted to regain his strength to go back out tomorrow and do the heavy lifting of society. When a yeah. teacher comes to me, a soldier goes, man, I loved your shit. I go, thank you. And thank you for what you do. But you guys come first. We're mm -hmm. here after that to entertain, to enrich yeah. society. But first we need food, water, a little bit of safety. And then after you have your domicile and clean water and access to food, you need access to entertainment. It's that high mm -hmm. up on the list. It's higher than your need for security, actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, actors are more important to society than cops and firemen at times if you can learn how to take care of your shit. You know? Yeah. But because people yeah. can't, we need the order of that. But Absolutely. that, in a nutshell, is like what I learned being a theater student and what I've learned in life, you know, about why we're so, why we have such an influence. It's because this kind of stuff, connecting, connecting and telling of stories, whether it's Once Upon a Time, Star Trek, whatever it is, it's sacred when it connects to an audience and makes them feel something. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that, that gets me off. That, <laughs> that excites me. That connects me. That connects me with thousands of years of actors totally that's where we get our that's why our that's why cast parties are so fun yeah because we are the spirit of dionysus we're back at bacchanalia our <laughs> roots are fucking we are hard we actors rock stars we teach the world how to fucking party <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's one of our jobs to, to show that like life is a joy Mm -hmm. But after we play tragedy, we're going to fucking party like rock stars. <laughs> it's the comedy tragedy mask. Of course. Absolutely. We need that. We need that. We need that. We need, to, we need a good cry to purge yeah. our soul. We need a good laugh to purge our soul. They're both mm -hmm. freeing and cathartic in their own way. Mm -hmm. And if, if we can deliver that in any small way, in 43 minutes on network TV or in a two hours in a theater and live or, you know, on a 90 minutes on the movie screen, we've mm -hmm. done our job. That's Amen. it. Pure and simple. That's what, it's our job. Mm -hmm. so. Jesus. Well, wow. I mean, I feel like I feel like we've literally gone to church today. <laughs> it feels amazing. It's been lovely. Yeah, exactly. but, um, I, I what I'm going to do. JB, I know you're going to say my last comment is like, I'm so proud to be an actor. I've worked hard at it. I wasn't really sure what it was all about when I, you know, started as a kid. But if there's any message I can share with your, your listeners and your viewers is that, you know, it, it, if you have to do it, it's the right thing to do. It, it can, you can find the rewards mm -hmm. in just what I'm saying about experiencing making one person laugh. Definitely. Making one person cry. 
that's powerful. And, and, and there's a responsibility to be, a, you know, it, that you are a little bit connected to the history of this business. Mm-hmm. I say this, give respect to get respect. Give it to get it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Cool. Awesome. Well, I mean, what I'll do, don't don't shoot off straight away because um, what I'll do is I'm, uh, I'm just going to, I finish up, but then we'll hang up. We can stop recording and then we can have a little tiny chat before you go. But um, honestly, it's been... Just for it to upload. Yeah. yeah, it's honestly, it's been it's been so lovely. Ha- it's just been so lovely, like, talking to you. It's been just so easy and it's just been really enjoyable. And I feel like I'm like, oh, I feel like there's so much more that we can talk about, but maybe we can get you back another time. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'll come, I'll come as much as you want. I heart you and I heart you now too, Snitchy. I mean, you guys... <laughs> Seriously, like there's people that you meet in your life that are just, you just know are good people. And I always felt that about you, girl. You have a smile. You have a way about you that, you know, I'm so happy for your success. And now I root for your friends as well. And this is how we do it. Make each other, you know, feel good when we open our hearts up like you guys have done. This is an easy podcast to do. Because I feel that you guys open your heart to me. So I, I don't, it's oh, not hard for thank me to you. share. You're welcome. Thank you very much. So how about this? How about on three, we all say goodbye. And then what I'll do is I'm going to stop it. And then we'll just have a little chat afterwards. But just to stop the recording, is that okay? Great. All right. So all bye on three. So one, two, three. Bye. 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 <laughs> So, in wow. the words of Justin Long, that just happened. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know about you, Jen, but that totally went in a completely different direction than I think we initially thought it would. It was great, um, but it just wasn't yes. what we anticipated. I think we thought it was going to no. be a little more like lighthearted and comedic, and it, it kind of was like this deep dive and like very philosophical yeah. and um yeah i don't uh, know yeah i know he had some great stuff to say like for sure i think i was just like wasn't prepared for him to go down that road but i think it was yeah no it was amazing great tips like very mm-hmm. on topic uh yeah so good yeah i know i was i know i think i think but yeah because i kept looking at you at, at points being like i was like i was not ready for him to go so like yeah yeah we, to we totally so, like, had a different deep. podcast i mean like, obviously i know he's i know he's he, you know i know he's yeah. he's a he's a deep thinker and every everything but i just wasn't i wasn't i just wasn't expecting that it just shows you never really know you never know you never how, really how know gonna what go. it's gonna go and yeah and no. with our podcast like we're you know try to keep it very natural and conversational so it's kind of you know i guess it just depends on the day it depends on what that person's thinking and and feeling and vibing yeah. and then we just you just have to go with it right so totally. no he was great yeah it was really fun to talk to um brought some amazing points up i'd be really happy for yeah. people like aspiring actors to listen to what he had to say um i was excited totally. that he he mentioned that thing that ross said which i think must be like something in actors' minds, the whole like 85% of the business or whatever is is up to me. So I yeah, need to make things absolutely. happen. It's just something like yeah. obviously as an agent, like I feel like right now I do the 85% and they do yeah. the 15%. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of, it's so refreshing to hear that because I really, I think he had so many good points about like, if you really want it, like go for it and like put yourself totally. into it and do it. Like how he was saying, like even the rock takes acting classes and that's why he's so great and whatever. And yes. Yeah. Well, and it's also just, like, yeah. I mean, the fact that he has, he actually hasn't had an agent for the last God knows how many yeah. years since like pirates, yeah. like that's that's insane like that really surprised me because I could see you were you were shocked too but I was like yeah. whoa like it just shows well, that you know yeah. he's connecting the dots yeah go, go for no it. I was gonna say well granted like I mean in, in Canada we don't have managers and I know in the mm-hmm. U.S. that 
it's more of a dynamic role, but you usually work with an agent, but it's kind of like a everything role, right? Maybe you give advice mm-hmm. on what what projects that person should do. You make connections for them, you make deals for them, and then you're also involved in like a kind of PR standpoint almost as well. Um, yeah. It's cool. I wish we had stuff like that here. I think I would really enjoy that kind of role. But um, yes, yeah, so it's like a bit different, I guess, from the agent thing. But I'm always, yeah, I'm always surprised when like somebody who's his age, because like he did come from the time of like agents. Um, yes. That, well, I guess he had one for 20 years. I mean, that's a really long time. Like, that's a really that's long time. Crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. That just blew my mind. I'm like, can I imagine like having a client for 20 years? That's crazy. It's yeah. amazing. I but, mean, you'd yeah. have to know them so well as well, like to yeah, have that 20 year definitely. relationship. For sure. And, uh, Are you going to uh, contact him for a uh, representation? I mean, I'm going to take it as like a verbal contract. He did say yeah, that yeah, he yeah. would be repped by me. So it's kind of like a done deal. No. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Honestly, like to be t- totally honest, when people are at that at that level, like and they have managers, mm-hmm. like I mean, he I feel like a lot of people have him in mind for roles anyway or yeah, yeah. it's just like a, it's another level. So it's not like you're of bringing course. someone on to, to build them up and have them audition tons for no random stuff no. you know so you get Understand. a little bit tricky yeah definitely but, I, uh, I mean wow. i wouldn't say no but <laughs> no of course not absolutely yeah. no, no definitely not well i one thing i i really i thought was quite funny is obviously we did have those three random questions that we were going to ask but then yeah just that that first one really did tie in straight away with the rest of one so it was like yeah. i'm glad that you said that because it was the perfect it was the perfect yeah. segue to go yeah. straight and into I felt it like so I felt like we, he was on a timeline and doing a third one and then I knew he'd yeah. probably want to say something else so it just totally. it felt like it was yeah. the right move to go but um I think so yeah so what else um I mean I have a million other questions for him but yeah I feel like yeah. he he had that on his heart like it seems like it's something that he's um been practicing and doing a lot Mm -hmm. and I and I admire that I know that like you know obviously he probably he was admitting he came from a place when he still is in that place where like he feels you know sometimes jealousy or like he's not good enough because other people are booking over him which I think is super charming and humble to hear from somebody like him like from another actor to hear that because it's like it happens to everybody no matter what level you're at right yeah so I think like for him obviously going uh through his you know thing about gratitude um is like a major part of his life obviously right now so i I can see that you know he's super passionate about it and that's why he wanted to talk about it and i feel like anything where you've made like this huge human shift is something that you want to you know bestow onto an audience or whatever so i think that was great that he talked about that i had i didn't know that he was um that kind of guy so that was interesting for me no well it was interesting because in comparison to um like i was actually going to make a comment but like at the same time it's always difficult when it's like through cameras and stuff but yeah it i was actually like quite because he he just looked he looked very healthy actually like i mean not yeah. that he looked unhealthy when i met him originally but he just looks very he just looks calmer within himself and things like that and just in comparison to when i knew him in vancouver i mean not that i mean you know not that i knew him overly overly well but i mean i feel like even though he downplays it i feel like it takes I think it takes a lot actually to be someone in his kind of position to be that kind and giving to someone who is just a BG on a show and to like take and to you know to treat them with kindness and and respect and then to you know I guess still stay in contact if because he could quite easily have just you know but I think it not. also comes down to like who you are as a core person because I'd like to think I mean you've heard the way I like for the audience you've heard the way I uh, act as an agent and like what I believe in and you know like empathy and human connection and things like that so I'd hope that if I was in his position I'd also be the same way like that I would be respectful of, of everyone else on the crew and like like exactly like he said if you're on set with people for that long like seven years like obviously they're your, your crew your family you're gonna want to get to know them like I feel like that would come naturally to somebody like me 
Whereas maybe Mm -hmm. to somebody else, like they would kind of be more isolating where they're like, well, I'm here to be this character. I'm not here to like make friends necessarily and whatever. And I guess it's just like, I guess a mindset of like just who you are as a person. Um, And it's nice when you hear, like it's nice when actors are like that and just being on set as a background. I mean, um, being like being able to uh, have those intimate connections or just it's just a chat or just like a hello or acknowledgement from somebody on set is so nice. Like I was on Smallville as a background and Christopher Columbus or Christopher Columbus, <laughs> Chris Columbus, <laughs> he, he didn't discover yeah, yeah. Yeah, America. Um, Chris Columbus yeah. um, was uh, the director who like, you know, directed the first two Harry Potters along with like a slew of other things. Yeah. And he, mm. you know, chatted with me and gave me some like advice and tips and like said, Oh, you, that was really great. Like that scene or whatever. And I was just like, cool. And then, you know, I always forget his name, but, Oh, Tom Welling, the lead Tom Welling um, was there. Yeah. And I like, uh, he um, was really friendly. I chatted with him. Um, the guy who played Lex Luthor was not friendly. But then I oh. spoke to a friend of mine who knows him. And he said, oh, he was probably just fully joking. Because uh, I told him what the exchange oh. was. And he was like, oh, he's probably just like totally joking. He didn't mean that. Right. Um, right. And I was like, okay, good. <laughs> that just repaired that horrible moment I had on yeah. on set that time when I was younger but yeah it's just really charming when like the leads of a show are just kind and interact with other people and it wasn't only me like they were just you know open to people talking to them and things like that so yeah for sure that was very long-winded but that's okay yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, of course it's okay it's a podcast mm-hmm. we can talk about literally anything yeah but uh i need to <laughs> i still haven't watched his seinfeld or friends episode and i'm going to because Me neither. i, I can was, see it I in my head well. and and i feel like it'll just be even more charming now that i've you know kind of gotten yeah. to know him a little bit um Definitely. but another thing I wanted to say sorry I was thinking about what to say in this section the whole time yeah. so that's why I'm like yeah, bleh, totally bleh. No, but I um, love it it's good I I feel like uh we talked a bit, a bit about COVID and him not really working and then he was totally fine with that um and uh I feel like this year just like changed everyone's perspective on like their friendships and their family and how lovely and important it is to like have that connection on the daily and I feel Mm. like it's it's just so nice to hear from him like oh that he just is happy to spend so much time with his son and really bond with him and I think that that's so special and shows like what kind of a person he is um for sure definitely and he was still humble enough to say that he was you know still kind of jealous looking at who was working and what was going on yeah but like you know trying to I actually love that yeah yeah. No, no, I no, I I honestly I actually really love that because in a way it kind of obviously, you know, jealousy is never a, a, a great thing and I would say most of the time I'm pretty good at not being jealous. But it's also quite it's quite validating to hear someone in his position that also kind of questions like is he good enough? Is he, you know, all those kind of things. And it's like, okay, cool. That's good. At least I'm not because I know I have that constantly so I'm like okay cool so it's not like we're we're that different really in yeah in in a way like those kind of problems always remain there because you're human so obviously of course you're gonna compare you're gonna compare yourself to other people and be like oh but why did they book you know instead of me and uh, when really at the end of the day it's so subjective and I do I do agree I think with COVID I think it has made people focus more on what's important to them rather than something that um that they believe is or that they believed is important but actually human connection is it's probably like one of the most important things now because you just want to have a yeah. hug from people you just want to see well people, it's also like you know? all you really have when you can't necessarily go out to restaurants or travel or whatever you, you you're mm-hmm. kind of more reliant on um your connections with people and also just like who's there for you when you can't see them like you and me like we chat Mm -hmm. all the time on the phone now and we're doing this and it's so 
great and it's helpful in this situation when you are feeling isolated um mm-hmm. from family and other friends and things like that so yeah but uh definitely anyway uh to end things off because i know people like yes. to hear about this jen tell me what have you been watching and right now and what is exciting <laughs> for you on television um well i've kind of given up with the flight attendant um I had that moment, yeah. but then I went back and finished it. Oh, right. Okay. It was episode four. We've finished I episode wonder, four. Yeah. I think my parents have also given up as well. I wonder if it was at the point that I was at too, because there was one episode where I was kind of like, eh, like, okay, kind of get it. And then mm. a couple weeks later, I just was like, okay, whatever, I'll just go back. And then it, and then it kind of turned around and, and was good to the end. So I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh. Um, but I did okay. the same thing, well, maybe- which is funny. Maybe I'll but try. maybe give it some time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll give it some time. Yeah, because I think the last time we watched an episode was probably a couple of days ago. So I think I might give it a little bit. But we did start Queen of the South. Um, oh, yeah, it's good, and right? And that's really, yeah, I mean, we've only watched the first episode, and a pilot is always really weird because they try and cram loads in. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can see that it's got legs. I can see that it's got legs, and I feel like it's going to be very, very interesting. So yeah, um, so yeah, we're doing that. I don't think there's anything else really that we're watching. Like just because I guess it's been so busy. Good. Um, yeah. and we did watch a couple of like weird films. Like I talked about that <laughs> unhinged movie. Yeah. <laughs> With the road mm. rage of Russell yeah. Crowe. I mean, thing is, he's obviously he's a great actor. He's a really great actor, but like it was just, it was just really intense and too far fetched for me to kind of get behind. And I, I mean, I don't want to offend Russell Crowe, but he was massive in this movie, like massive as in not like muscular. Oh, yeah. No, and Russell. I was like, wow. I was like, is That's this okay. a you body get older? Suit? It happens. Yeah. Oh wow. I know, really? But I was like, a bit that like, big Whoa. of a difference. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, 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 wow. But yeah, so. Yeah, other than that, there's not really a lot. What about you? What have you been watching? What have you been consuming? Um, still watching Shadow and Bone. It's it's really good. Mm. It's totally up my alley. I can see why they called it somewhat of a Game of Thrones thing. But I mean, nothing will be Game of Thrones. But mm. like, it's yeah, there's Lost. vibes along that vein, and it has like good mm. production quality. But yeah, it's good. I really really like it. I think I might read the books um, as well. Nice. Um, and then this is embarrassing, but, um, sometimes I just like my (laughs) raunchy reality TV. So there's been this show on Netflix. I'm sure everyone's noticed because it's been up there forever and it's called the circle. And I was like, oh yeah, this show, like this looks so stupid. But then I, I guess you know about it because it was from the UK, but I didn't know about it. And I've never watched it, but I've seen it. Like, yeah, so there. there was like Circle, and then there was like Circle France, Circle Brazil, or whatever. And obviously, it started from Circle UK. So whatever it was, I was like, okay, I just want to watch something blah. I don't need to think about it. I put it on. Sean and I like ate through this show. It's actually shockingly addicting. It's hilarious. It's people who um, only connect through this social media app, and they're all put in this one apartment building. And they can't see each other. So you can either be yourself and be authentic or you can be totally somebody else and you can catfish everybody. So there's like oh, a wow. few men who are like either playing their girlfriend or like something. And it's so funny because there'll be like a dude flirting with a dude and you can hear them like having this conversation. It's so hilarious because oh my yeah, God. I don't know. the people actually in the first season are so charming. There's like a guy who's from I think Chicago and he's like you know from Chicago you know he's like kind of like kind of Jersey Shore steaming a little bit but then um yeah. and so at first I was like oh this guy's annoying and then you just love him at the end you're like he's such a sweetheart like he's so nice to everybody and then yeah there's the guy playing his girlfriend and he's like hi everyone like oh that was a great one Jen it was all the girls um invited him to a girls chat and they were talking about their periods and he was freaking out and he was saying like the funniest (laughs) comments and they were like oh I've never heard of that happening before 
that's weird and he's just like and this is where i leave and he was just like panicking oh like, my god they were all like oh my cramps were really bad like da, da, da. And they were going, so funny so oh yeah it, it's actually kind of like weirdly entertaining and hilarious i know they're doing the season two right now but uh wow. yeah if you like like reality tv i mean for anyone listening it's, it's actually kind of worth the thing and the only annoying part is that you hear them saying all the messages so it can get a little annoying sometimes because you have to be like circle message hey everybody blah 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 and some people say it like really robotically <laughs> and oh, then like right, hashtag okay. girls rule send and then you have to like listen to everybody doing that but you get kind of used to it so that's the only annoying right, okay. part of it i guess but it was funny yeah, and then there was, like, this super nerd guy playing, like, a hot guy, and he was, like, trying to play this douchey hot guy, and he's, like, been with his wife for 11 years and, like, trying to flirt with women, and it was just so cringy, and everyone was like, oh, what, oh, no. what are you saying? And he should have just been himself at the end, but yeah, then they kind of reveal 100%. themselves if they get blocked and taken away, so everyone gets to, like, see who they really are, and so everyone, like, freaks out. It's funny. Oh, anyway. wow. Went on. Wow, it seems like it's... I'm really obsessed with that show, but I just watched it over two days. That's like, <laughs> well, yeah, understandable. Like when you when you deep dive it for two days, it's that's all you can yeah. see. Have you ever? I don't know if you. I mean, keeping on the vein of uh, reality TV, and it's not something I've ever actually uh, watched for a long period of time. But have you ever heard of this show in the UK called Naked Attraction? No. Oh, wait, did I watch it? Yeah, I think so. It's like, a, is it the show where you only see the person <laughs> naked, but you don't see their face? Yeah, so it goes and up. You have to, so you or like it with the shows lower half different first. parts of the body. <laughs> yeah, and like, and then they're like zoom in. They're like zooming in to someone's privates and you're just like, oh, this is really weird. Watched, but then I like a couple of those. Yeah, so funny. It's like it's so weird for anyone who isn't in the UK who's never heard of this random show. Is that like it's it's so weird. Like and I, the first time I watched it, I was with my parents. Like we were just flicking oh through, and like my mom and dad were like, "Oh my god!" Because they were literally just like six That's penises. Somebody's weak. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh and you're like, oh, um, but and they're gonna listen to this episode and be like mortified. But um, so it's but it's what's weird is like so when so you choose someone based solely on where they look like naked and then it gets to and then I think it gets to the face at the end so you see them fully um and then when they come out and they've been chosen by this guy or girl or whatever who is um uh interested in them then that person has to go away and come back naked so that then they've both seen each other naked before they even have a first date I mean it's ludicrous. I mean, this is a show I would never be caught dead on in a million no. billion years. No. <laughs> same, same. Oh god. I love how this. I love how the end of the episode with Lee Arenberg has ended up us talking about um, reality TV and um, and dinks, a bunch of penises. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, dinks. That's okay because yeah. that's yeah. who we are. Anyway, exactly. I feel like yeah. we've we've gone on long enough. We've, but, co uh, we've I, covered it, yes. Yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed this episode with Lee and we'll probably yeah. bug him to be on again and explore 100%. many other topics. Yes, because there's so much to talk about, especially yeah. I think with Lee, because I think he's he's he understands the industry very well. He's lived very, it very for well. long enough, so yeah, 50 years. Sure. Yeah, um, I know. Well, I don't know how when he started, but anyway well one of his first credits i saw on imdb was 1987 and that was the year i was born so and we'll leave it there <laughs> all right <laughs> bye everybody <laughs> all right bye everyone bye, bye.